a West cowboy dirty Harry aspect. There's also an aspect. So they're macho that, men and they got to have influence. a gun. Go ahead. Make my day. Anybody that wants to disarm me can drop dead. Vice President Biden and I had um, a meeting with a group of technology people and talked about how um, guns can be made more safe by making them either through fingerprint identification, um, the gun talks to a, a bracelet or something that you might wear. Anybody that wants to make me unarmed and helpless, mm -hmm. people that want to literally create the proven places where more innocents are killed, called gun-free zones, mm -hmm. we're going to beat you. We're going to vote bill. you out of office yes. or suck on my machine yes. gun. That's why you're going to fail, and the establishment knows, no matter how much propaganda, the republic will rise again when you attempt to take our guns. Guns will be taken. No one will be able to be armed. We yes, will sir. take all yes, weapons. Sir. I believe that as Americans, we have a right to arm ourselves against criminals, but we don't need the ability to arm ourselves against the army or the police. The United States military is not out to get us. And I think that's a healthy thing to question your government. I don't think it's particularly healthy uh, to question the military. Hitler took the guns. Stalin took the guns. Mao took the guns. Fidel okay. Castro took the guns. Many... Hugo Chavez took the guns. And I'm here to tell you, 1776 will commence again if you try to take our firearms. I don't want that man to have a gun. I wouldn't feel comfortable having an argument with him mm. in his home. Challenge Alex Jones to a boxing match, show up with a semi-automatic that you got <laughs> legally, and pop him. I'd love to see that. <laughs> in uniform. <laughs> you don't have that much time to take away Americans' guns, declare martial law, and put hardworking Americans in FEMA camps. If you're going to do that, you better, better get, get started. You better get started. <laughs> Refugees are pouring into our great country from Syria. We don't even know who they are. They could be ISIS, they could be anybody. What's our president doing? Is he insane? Another threat that President Obama mentioned was ISIS. Well, who on earth armed them? Who helped to arm the Syrians that were fighting against Assad? Who created the necessary political climate that facilitated the situation? Who pushed for the delivery of arms to the area? Do you really not understand as to who is fighting in Syria? This is Uncle Sam with music and the truth until dawn. Right now, I got a few words for some of our brothers and sisters in the occupied zone. The chair is against the wall. John has a long mustache. This is the heart of 1776. It's 12 o'clock, Americans, another day closer to victory. And for all of you out there on or behind the lines, this is your song. Shane Steiner's involvement with InfoWarsLife.com truly happened in an organic way. I went to high school with Shane, his brother, knew his parents well, and he was visiting the office once, hadn't been to the office in years, and said, wow, I notice you're making and selling supplements. Do these really work? Because I've tried a lot of supplements as a uh, workout enthusiast, and I really think most of them are hype. And I said, here, take some home, try it. Well, a few weeks later, he came in blown away and said, I want to buy three boxes of this stuff to get my friends and family. It's simply amazing. He said, why does it work so well? And I said, listen, go to InfoWarsLife.com, watch the informational videos with Dr. Group and others. They understand how it all works. I know that it works for me. That's all I understand. The science, the facts, the research, people's testimonials, they're all on InfoWarsLife.com. You can check it out for yourself. I wanted to go to the gym. I wanted to push myself and work out harder. And that led to me being able to come out and do stuff like the barefooting and the surfing and stuff like that, which what I would have never done. I, I never would have done that uh, two years ago. Shane has said over and over again, more than just libido and energy, it made him want to get into the gym more. It made him want to get in better shape. And believe me, the Steiners have amazing genetics. Uh, his brother is a world champion steer wrestler. His dad, Bobby Steiner, is a famous world champion bull rider. They've got natural genetics. But when you added this to the mix, in Shane's own words, it took him to the next level. Shane noticed the mental clarity 
Bobby was able to work out longer and gain muscle mass. He's already completely shredded. I gotta admit, for me, the biggest effect has been libido. Now, I've never claimed to have a body like some beach model, but back when I was 20, 22 years old and worked out every day, I looked great. But over the years, and being married, having three kids, and working 18 hours a day, I gained basically 100 pounds. And it's been a long process of losing that weight in the last four years. But if you look at the photos and the videos of what I looked like four or five years ago versus today, the results are dramatic. I'd already cleaned up my diet, I was working out hard, but I'd only lost about 20 pounds. It was adding the other key ingredients ingredients from InfoWarsLife.com that helped me personally go to the next level and shed another 35 pounds. This has actually made me feel so good that uh, here lately, about a year ago, I started training jujitsu and that kind of led to doing some boxing and kickboxing. I mean, it's, it's amazing that two years ago I was on the couch and couldn't even tie my shoes. And now I'm training with MMA fighters and uh, just doing stuff that I never thought that I'd, I would be doing ever again. So Super Male Vitality has allowed me to do some amazing things. And if it has those kind of effects for me, I know that it will do great things for you. So just try Super Male Vitality. I promise you, you'll love it. And finally, let's look at Anthony Gucciardi, InfoWars.com reporter. He also works with Dr. Group and others helping develop the newest, most cutting edge, high quality supplements. Let's take a look at what happened when he tried to barefoot ski for the first time with the Steiners. And remember, we're not making fun of him. He had the will to get in the arena and he's lost more than 10 pounds in the last few years of fat and gained more than 10 pounds of muscle and Anthony chalks it up to super male vitality as well. Bottom line, folks, you want to discover the power of super male vitality and super female vitality for yourself by visiting InfoWarsLife.com today or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Do you hear that? That's Europe being flushed down the giant toilet in the house of globalism. George Soros, one of the main plumbers responsible for the leaking pipes of Europe, is declaring to the public like the proud Black Lives Matter funding billionaire criminal he is, that the EU is on the verge of collapse. While the Dutch prime minister says, And let me be clear, the current numbers are not sustainable. We are running out of time. <coughs> We need a sharp reduction in the number of refugees in the coming six to eight weeks. The UK's Express reports frustrated female refugee center workers who welcome the refugees with open arms and compassion are on the verge of quitting after regularly being sexually assaulted and even threatened with decapitation by a wave of 25-year-old male refugees. Meanwhile, the ungrateful invaders are now suing the German government, complaining that the asylum process is taking too long. Some European countries are beginning to fight back, as Denmark is considering moving the refugees to camps outside the cities. While a wave of derelicts dubbed rape fugees victimized record numbers of women and children across Eurasia. But in Sweden, where the rape epidemic in particular is exploding, Sweden is funding a sniper training course for recently arrived third world refugees as part of their integration program, despite the ever-growing refugee terrorist attacks across Europe. The sniping course began on a small scale in the fall. Interest exploded among the non-white invaders to take the course. Sweden has officially lost its collectivized mind. And where does the Obama administration stand on the preparedness of the inevitable confrontations within the United States? The Washington Examiner reports a pair of Department of Homeland Security officials told the Senate on Wednesday that the government does not search for most of the people who overstay their temporary visas. A day after DHS said that nearly 500,000 people were still in the United States after having overstayed their visas last year. Those DHS officials had to testify because the DHS has failed miserably in an attempt to implement a biometric refugee tracking system that was supposed to be up and running over 10 years ago, as required by law in 2004. 
The Washington Free Beacon reports, senior Obama administration officials had trouble in the past year informing Congress about the number of individuals who had overstayed their visas. The administration also could not provide Congress with statistics about the number of Syrian refugees who had been granted residency in the United States in 2015. There are currently 1,000 open investigations into ISIS members in the United States right now. And that number is trivial. The investigations of 113 of those foreign-born individuals with terror charges have been blocked by the Obama administration since 2014. So, America, can I ask you a question? What are you going to do when and if the rape of your sister, mother, wife, or girlfriend by Middle Eastern refugees starts happening in your town? John Bound for Infowars.com. Jakari Jackson reporting here from the University of Texas. We're going to ask the students here what they think about ride sharing. Ride sharing being things like Lyft and Uber. The city council wants to put restrictions on Lyft and Uber, and their rationale is safety concerns, both driver identification as well as vehicle registration. But on the flip side of that, I do know from going to city council meetings, they are pushing pretty hard to get people to use their public transportation. So we're going to talk to the students here and see if a middle ground can be reached. We're asking people what they think about services like Lyft and Uber. Okay, um, I think they're really helpful. Uh, they keep kids from drunk driving, which is really good. Um, there's been enough drunk driving deaths already, so I don't think the city should get rid of them. I mean, I definitely think it should be safe. Like, I don't want to be getting in a car with like a kidnapper, but like, I don't know. There should be like protocol, but it should also be there. You know, not just taxis because taxis are expensive. Well. Um... I think that the the basic registration of your vehicle, you know, having a having a valid license is important. Um, not necessarily having an extensive background check. It's it's everybody's choice to take an Uber, and usually you go in groups. Um, I don't see I don't see much risk in it. We're asking people if they use services like Lyft or Uber. Yeah, I do. Okay. Did you know what the city council wants to? Uh, so you already yeah, heard about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So what are your thoughts on that? I hope they don't take it away. I use it almost every weekend. I think we've got a great example of the free market working to produce the service that people want and the city council deciding that that wasn't good enough and that the uh, combination of the people needing more safety than they're willing to pay for and probably listening to some lobbying from the taxi uh, industry. Okay, have you heard about the city council trying yeah, to put the restrictions? I signed the petition, man. City council, can I say that? Yes, sir. Yeah, f*** y'all. Leanne McAdoo for Infowars.com. I'm here in front of the Genesee County Courthouse. This is uh, right here in Flint, Michigan, and I wanted to draw your attention to this historical marker. And as you can see, Genesee County was one of the first anti-slavery settlements. Uh, there was a small number of African Americans settled here. They found cheap land, uh, employment, barbers, laborers, farmers, carpenters. Um, so they were able to really make a life for themselves here, as well as really promote this idea of abolishing slavery. A lot of famous people came here to lecture right here at this spot, at this historical site. And I wanted to point this out to just let just let everyone kind of realize this place was a bustling community, an industrial town, a lot of beautiful architecture here, really representative of just how uh, rich in culture it was here. And then what happens? You have things like NAFTA shipping all the jobs overseas, a loss of industry here, uh, the economy just tanks. You have the people who can't afford it moving out of here, and then the rest of the people who are left here in this crumbling economy what was once a beautiful, bustling city, people walking down Main Street in their fur coats, now is the murder capital of the, of the United States, really high crime. We've had several people since we came here told us not to go in certain areas because we will get killed. You know, and so it's taken a, a complete 180. And that's what happens when you get in a big, bloated, corrupt government that takes that American ingenuity and takes the Americans that are just, they want to leave the abusive conditions they're in to go and make a better life for themselves and they do and then 
the government sort of sees that, they get too big and they want to suck it all away and make you be reliant on them for whatever you need, turn this into a welfare state, and now we can see the long-term effects of that. So we need to just be aware. Be